Welcome to Talking Halos. This is Derek C. Apollo with Jared Timms and Nate Green. Negative Nate. We're just wrapping up the Angels Red Sox series. It appears that as we shut things down here for the weekend, that the Red Sox are going to take two out of three. And today was a rough one, guys. First thoughts in the series. First one, Nate, one, how you doing? And first thoughts, go. Uh, doing good. Um, similar similar team to what you saw last year. I know everyone wants to say different team, but uh, not a lot of hits with runners in scoring position. I think that's a big key to this team. And we're just, this lineup is not looking good. They've, they've got to find some productivity from, from somebody other than Mike Trout and Taylor Ward. Jared? Uh, we were we were pretty close to being right there, Nate. Um, other than the than the Friday game, but we did say it was going to come down to the bullpen those first two games, and yep. that's kind of kind of what happened. On Friday, you saw Angels bullpen not be what it was supposed to be. Um, you know what they're what they're not what they're paying for, Nate. If you want to want to play that game, what they're paying. Well, I, for. I I just didn't understand you runs. So you know Soriano doesn't have his stuff like. That that's what kind of, and I know we'll get into this in a minute, but like Soriano doesn't have his A stuff. You run him out there in the first inning, gives up the bomb. You run him out there a second inning, gives up another bomb, and you're like, ah, you know what? I got a great idea. Let's run him out there a third inning. We know he doesn't have his stuff, and let's see if he gives up another bomb in the third inning. It's like, well, why? You you got to be able to read the situation, and I know they're trying to get three innings out of Soriano every time they run him out there, but like. That's just not how most bullpens are built. Most bullpens aren't like, hey, we've got this guy, and every time he comes in, he comes in with a close close game, whether it's tied or or a one run lead or something, and we're hoping to get three three innings out of him. Like that that's not a typical bullpen. Um just use Soriano the way he's supposed to be used, an inning, two tops, and just let him go out there and get outs. Like stop worrying about him getting his pitch count up and being able to use as a starter later on if you need it. It's like just use him in the role he's been successful in in the big leagues. For, for me, for me, the thing that bothered me the most about that game is you're down five one, come back and you tie it up, and you can't, you just can't hold it there. You know, it, it, I don't think they took the lead ever, but I mean, you came back, you tied it up, you got to keep it a, you, you kept it a close game, but you, I mean, you just kept coming back and tying it up. It felt like a couple times there, and yeah, the bullpen's just got to be better. I'm fine, I'm fine with using Soriano in three innings there, just. You know, you, you but you tell, knew that was, that was not his best stuff. Like no, you, you could tell he goes he, out there, gives up a missing. tank, walks a guy, another tank. Like you, you knew it wasn't, and he wasn't striking guys out. Like that's the big thing when you watch Soriano when he's on, he's striking two two guys out an inning, not one guy in three innings. So you knew he didn't have it, and you continue to run him out there, hoping that he was miraculously going to find it after not having it for the first two innings. So it just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, and yeah, I. I don't know. I mean, is there anybody else in the bullpen that you trust in that situation? Like, I I think they had everyone available. It was the first game of the series. You had Matt Moore available. Matt Moore would have been fine in the eighth inning or or the yeah the eighth inning of a tie game. Um, I probably would have been fine with Simber in that situation, depending on right left. I don't remember who it was at that point, but um, if you're gonna run, you you had Moore and you had Simber who could get a righty out or who could get a lefty out. Those are kind of the only two guys I trust in the pen right now that have kind of been able to get outs. And obviously you have a Stevis, but you're not going to bring a Stevis in in a 7-6 game or uh, going into the ninth. So I don't know. It's, there are options. Like we don't have to force Soriano to throw three innings every time he goes out there. Yeah, and then you can't use him the rest of the weekend basically at that point. Yeah, it, it it's, it's a once-a-weekend thing. And like you better use him and he better be really good and you better win when you use him. Yeah. My thing is you you paid all that money for this bullpen and then you don't use it. Well that's essentially yeah. what you're doing. Like you're you're well you're, the the high price bullpen piece hasn't isn't I know, I know, yet. but what I'm saying is they did invest money in the bullpen. I know they, they put time in the bullpen, but yet you're only gonna use one piece you do have available for three innings. What good is that? You're it's doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially when the game is still in play. Like if you know a guy doesn't have his best stuff, and you why run him out there for three innings hold? It's a different story if the guy's mowing down people. And yeah, he's in the group. If he if, had gone two innings and hadn't given up a run, different story. Oh yeah, like you said if he's striking guys out, but no, you just get him out of there. Games in play and wind up being a loss. 
the first two games of the series were close, 8-6, and then 2-1 to one last night. Reed Detmer throws a gem. All right, guys, I have a question for you. I got to ask the question. Buying or selling? Reed Detmer's. Buying or selling? I'm going to go with Jared first. Buy, buy, buy. Come on, I said Jared first, Agnetta. Come on. <laughs> Jeez, Jared. I'll, I'll, I'll buy on him. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll buy this year. You know, he's, I, yeah, he, 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 give me another start or two, but right now I'm, I'm buying, I'll stay neutral for the time being. Um, but what, what you've seen that, what you've seen out of the first, I mean, we're, we're too, we're, we're still, you'll, so you don't want to just, you don't want to take the shot and give me a, give me a, come on. Give me a month of, give me a month for the starters. Give me like three or four starts. Like you're going to ask next, you're going to ask me if I'm buying Tyler Anderson, I'm going to be like, whoa, pump the brakes. Well, here. none of let's us see what he does that. against. Let's see what he does against Tampa, you know, but Reed Detmer is like, I'll buy him over almost anybody else in this, in this rotation right now. Um, he looks really good commanding all the pitches. Um, big thing is that front side, as long as he doesn't fly open, he looks, looks really, really good. Um, and yeah, he's throwing that slider a little slower as well. Um, so he's getting a little more depth on it and it's good. It's a, it's, it's a nice pitch for him change up. He, he's using as well. So as long as he continues to do this, you know, there's going to be ups and downs in, in the year for a pitcher. As long as he keeps those, those downs to a minimum, he'll, he'll be, he'll, I mean, the AL pitching isn't all that great. So it wouldn't surprise me if he got a couple like 10th, ninth place Cy Young votes, if he continues this, but again, we're two starts into the season. So, you know, I'll stay neutral for now, but I like it. I like what I'm saying. Nate. Buying. Um, this is this is what we've been looking for out of him. We've been looking for him to take that step. Um, and I think this is kind of starting. He hasn't pitched good to start his career early in the season. So to see him come out of the gates hot and, and throw two really, really good starts uh, in games the Angels needed um, a big start out of him, it, it's really encouraging. I think that's the biggest thing for me right now with him is he's had to pitch in two really tough spots. You had the bullpen kind of fall apart in game one, uh, eight, six game. You had to, you had to eat innings out of, out of the starter. And he did it. Like he was able to go six innings to get 12 punches. The first time against Baltimore, there were back-to-back bad starts. And it was like, Reed, we really need you to just go out there and, and get out and, and not have a Patrick Sandoval type of start. And he didn't. So that's why I'm buying. Cause I think this is, this is big for him just to be able to, to be the guy the Angels need to count on. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited with what he's got so far. Uh, no fencing for me, Jared. No fencing for me. I'm buying. And if you guys think back to early, probably, I don't know, maybe a month ago, we, we talked about some of the stuff on the show, and we talked about pitchers. And do you remember the name I brought up? Nolan Ryan? No. Come on. I brought Reed Detmers. Like you guys are higher than other folks. That's fine. I kind of figured but my, that way. my gut feeling has been if there was one person who would benefit from Shoyo Tani leaving the rotation and be and giving and getting some sort of regularity five days, it would be Reed Detmers. And I don't know if that holds up. I don't know if my theory on that is completely incorrect and I'm just throwing darts at a wall, but that was my gut feeling. And everything we're seeing from him right now is electric in terms of what we'd hoped for and i want to go back because in that same podcast the guy you were you were on was chase silseth and he had another rough start today what are you seeing from him to where he wouldn't be meeting your expectations i think one thing with him his velo is way way down right now um typically somewhere in that 95 97 range he's been 93 95 um i i didn't think it was that bad of a start he made he made a couple mistakes got behind uh, to the nine hitter, which can't happen. And then, you know, made a mistake to, to, I, I didn't even think it was a mistake to, uh, to Devers. I thought that was a, a decent pitch. It was out of the zone. Uh, Devers just put a really, really good swing on it. was able to hit the ball out of the ballpark. But um, I, I think he made two mistakes. He made the mistake to Tyler O'Neill and he made the, the mistake to the kid, um, the shortstop. And, and that was about it. Um, I thought he was able to to get through five innings and, and do a decent job, but the velo being down is is a little bit of a, a question mark for me right now because normally he's somewhere in that ninety five, ninety seven range, and he's he's lucky if he's hitting ninety five. Sure. Um, two or three of those pitches that were home runs were out of the zone as well. Uh, yeah, the fastball was up though. That, yeah, but I mean, you don't. 
against David Hamilton, kid that yeah, do exactly. You, you, you don't expect no him to go yard on something like that. But yeah, I mean, when the velo is down, that fastball doesn't play up very well. So somebody can catch up to it. And then you give a home run on a what was it a splitter away or a curveball away to Devers? Who's it was a splitter to Detmers. One of the one of the best De- Devers, excuse Devers. me. I mean, one of the best hitters in, in the game when he's when he's on, and you're going to leave a pitch like that up. So yeah, I mean, for for me, and I was I was debating it. He needs he need not even if the velocity is down. We compared him to Shohei Otani at repertoire, repertoire wise forever now. He needs to add a pit a a hard pitch that moves. You know whether it's a cutter. There is a sinker element to like they call it a sinker on Savant. Um, I don't necessarily agree with it. I don't think you see the run. You don't see the depth on it as much. Um, he needs something. He needs a hard pitch that moves. Um, you know, he's got the sweeper. That's not too bad. He's got the big loopy curveball. And he's got the splitter. Um, but he needs he needs something different. You know, he needs something hard that that can move. Maybe a cutter of of sorts um, or two seam something something like that. Because just the fastball, especially with the velo being down, just not gonna not gonna play. But other than that, I mean, I'd rather rather see guys give up solo shots than walks. I mean, that's always been that's always been where I where I lie when it comes to pitching. Uh, so he walked two guys, which isn't good, but he he gave up three runs for five innings. He gave his team a chance to stay in it. Then you bring in Cisneros and you bring in Suarez, who you know kind of blow the game open in a sense. And and now we're sitting here talking the Angels losing losing two or three instead of you know competing and um, and possibly winning two of three. So. Uh, it, t- tough series for sure. Um, Angels never really played Boston well. They haven't played Boston well for five, eight years. It feels like every time I, oh, I, I don't I'm like older than you, dude. It maybe I'll, forever, I'll like 25, 30 years. That's 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 fine. But I, they just, I feel like they never play Boston well. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, a nice sweep last year, but yeah, usually that's the case. Um, moving on here, I think we've said all we can say considering when things how things went. Nolan Shanwell. We're going to talk about him before we do. Here's a word from our sponsors. All right, so Nolan Shanwell, uh, we, a week ago, a week ago, who would have known it? Had his streak running past 30 games of on base to start a career, and then we get word on the 6th that Major League Baseball went back. I, I, help me understand this, guys went back to March 30th and reverse a call on a single to a missed catch error, which ended his on-base streak at 30 games, finishing the third longest to begin an MLB career. Um, Several folks are upset about this. I know the Angel Nows team was railing on it yesterday. I'm going to go with negative Nate first. How you feel about uh, this? Well, first off, this is a pretty normal practice in Major League Baseball. You do have have times where pitchers will uh, ask Major League Baseball, especially because they get paid based on ERA, right? All these guys get pay, paid based on numbers. So whether it's hits, whether it's runs, RBIs, all these things, they get paid based on that. So you have pitchers who will be like, hey, that's that's not a hit. That's an error because that cost me a run or that cost me this or that cost me that. So this is actually pretty normal practice uh, after games. You don't usually see it take five days for, for major league baseball to respond, but um, it is pretty normal for, for guys to be asking for hits to become errors or errors to become hits, vice versa, depending on who the guys are. Um, do I care about this story? Absolutely not. Like, I, I don't care that Nolan Chanuel gets on base at every single time to start his career. Like, I know it's a great story, but before this happened, could you have named the guy who held this record? No, nobody could have because nobody cares, right? Like, I care about wins and losses. Like, that's great. Individual statistics are great. But this isn't even an individual statistic that people care about. Like, y- you might hear about this number when people get real close to um it's is it um i'm blanking on who holds who holds the record for um longest career or longest streak of on base in a in a season not to start a career just in a season um but but yeah like nobody cares about this like if you were to go up to someone who really knows baseball and ask like hey who owns this record most people aren't even going to know this like, yeah, if Shanuel owned this record, maybe Angel fans would know this, but nobody else would care, and nobody else would know the record. 
I care about, does he look like he belongs in Major League Baseball right now? And he doesn't. Uh, he's not putting together good ABs, a lot of ground balls. He's got two hits. One of them's a homer that left Miami. I didn't even think he got all of it. I didn't think it should have got out, but it did, which is huge for him. Um, and he just doesn't look major league ready. And I'm really, really upset with, with the angels because I said this all spring training long, you need competition for this guy, right? Like we can't just be giving jobs away to guys that aren't a hundred percent ready. If, if this is a Zach Neto or Logan Ohapi, that's fine. I'm fine with them because they played enough games and showed enough last year to be like, Hey, I'm ready to play every single day. And if I, if I can't do it, then you guys can make a, make a change. But like, it didn't even feel like we brought in real major league competition for Shanuel. Yeah. We brought in the kid from the Mariners. Yeah. We brought in, um, some other guys, but they, they just weren't actual threats to Shanuel. Like it would have been awesome to see the angels go out and get a Joey Votto on a minor league deal or a one year, $1 million deal, similar to what the angels did with Aaron Hicks and did that at first base and say, Hey, whoever wins the job, I don't care, but we want the best nine guys on the field. And if Shanuel's not ready, Shanuel's not ready. Like put him back in double A, put him back, put him in triple A, say, just go rake in triple A. It's pretty easy to hit, hit down there. Um, go out there and absolutely rake and prove to everyone that this is your job. We want it to be your job, but this isn't really good for him to go up there and, and be in 077 with a 498 OPS. Like that doesn't help anyone. Um, it, it's really just going to hurt his career in the long run. So I, I'm sorry. I'm not, not a big fan of this on base streak. Sure. Um, I mean, it kind of, kind of sucks for sure. Um, but I mean, I'd like to see him hit, you know, I'd like to see him not be batting in the two hole, you know, batting a hundred, whatever, whatever he's batting right now. Oh, uh, or, oh, like, oh say, whatever it is. I'd prefer, I'd prefer oh, 77. Him, that's fine. I, I I prefer to see him hit and things like that. However, I mean, it's good. He's getting on base and, and, and things like that. That's, that's fantastic. Um, to answer it, Ted Williams holds the record 84. Um, Thank you. Um, I and, almost said Ted Williams too. And I was like, oh, it's not him. Yeah, no, Orlando, actually funny, Orlando Cabrera had one with the Angels, um, so it's kind of kind of cool there. The reason but, I didn't say Ted was I thought it was DiMaggio, too, because, you know, the yeah. hit streak, yeah. Uh, I, I like the way he handled it, though, you know. Um, I think I, I think Erica Weston or somebody media-wise asked him for this game, the game yesterday or today, and it was like, it's, you know, so so what? It's a streak, you know um it it's just part of it you know we move we move on um it was it was really cool but you know got got to move on got to got to there i have bigger things to do you know so i i did like the way he handled it um but yeah it, i mean from a fan perspective it sucks i i, I don't understand I, I still don't understand why i mean i understand why mlb did it but i don't understand um how you can do you know do stuff like this it's kind of kind of kind of interesting for sure plus you look at the play, it's boring. It was an error. It's, it was an error. I don't think it's – okay. That's a terrible throw. That's a That's terrible it. throw. It's a terrible throw, but he dove to go get it. I mean, it's – I don't know. It's it's a judgment call, and they, the judgment on it is in error. So, yeah, it's, it is it, it is what it is. All right. So my thoughts are kind of like, eh. Eh. It's a little weird to go back seven days, but – yeah, I think there's a general overreaction to it. That's just my view. I kind of follow along with you guys on this. Uh, going forward here, did the you, racers. Pardon me. I was just gonna say, did you see Ted Williams' numbers from when his on his 84 game on street on base streak was? Did you no. see what his numbers were on that, Jared? No, I didn't see it. Did you? I'm sure he's bad. 371, 24 homers, 80 RBIs, 19 Ks, 92 walks. Like that. That is different, right? Like, that's not what Shanuel is doing. Shanuel is going 0 for 4 with a walk, 0 for 4 with a hit by pitch. Like, he, he's not putting up these kind of numbers. So, again, I don't even think it's really comparable. Okay, looking ahead here to the Ray series. I'm pitching matches on Monday, Hamilton versus Eflin, Sandoval versus Savali on Tuesday, Wednesday, Canning versus Littell. Going to Jared first. Jared, matchups here. How do you like these matchups with a Ray's team that's been a little they haven't caught well, the Rays are usually pretty good at you know getting the best out of their talent. They haven't quite done yet this far. Your thoughts here on this series that with the Rays. 
still a raise. Um, still a scary team for sure. Um, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Tyler Anderson does. Like if he continues the trend, the changeup was really good on his first start. Um, tough, tough matchup though. Zach Eflin's a really, really good pitcher. Um, and kind of interesting that, that these two square off against each other because they got the exact same contract last year. Um, and you've seen Eflin go up and you've seen Tyler Anderson kind of go down. So kind of, kind of interesting there. Um, I'm going to say the Rays win that one um, <laughs> just from, a, from that standpoint. Um, good matchup as well on Tuesday with uh, with Sandoval and Savali. If Sandoval can do what he did in his last start, looks good. If he does what he did um, in his first start, you know, there's a lot of emotion there. There's a lot of overthrowing. Then it's going to be a bit of an issue there. Um, that one's going to come down to the bullpen. I think Tampa's got a better bullpen than the Angels. But again, we'll we'll, we'll kind of wait and see. Whoa, um, we paid for ours, though. Yeah, well, I mean, that's what happens when you develop. Um, and then Wednesday... Uh, Canny against uh, Lytle. I'm up in the air on that. It's going to come down to the offenses there, and and you know if the Angels are on, they're gonna they're gonna hit pretty well. Um, it's a Wednesday though, Wednesday day game, and you're getting out of here for uh, for I think a, a you're you're flying back east too, so we might Boston. not see tr- Boston. Yeah, Boston. we might you might not see Trout that day. You might not see you know some of the big boppers, which uh, which definitely worries me there as well. So wasn't Thursday an off day? Yes. Yeah, so but maybe still, they play him. You you might you might but but still flying back and all that stuff I, I I don't know so if the Angels got swept against Tampa it, it definitely wouldn't surprise me um I I find it hard to think that they're gonna take two of three or even sweep the series but weirder things have happened I mean when was it last year or two years ago when the Angels were red hot and they swept Tampa and it was like wow like this is a this this team might be doing stuff and then all of a sudden they go they they fly back east after that Tampa series and start losing twelve in a row I think it was Madden's last year actually. Um, cause I think that was the Reed Detmers no hitter, um, at home. So yeah, but Nate tough series. Yeah. I, I don't love the, the matchups for the angels in this series. Um, I think the angels somehow win one out of three, just kind of like what we talked about early. The angels are going to be, t- they're going to have a tough time beating good teams, Baltimore, uh, Tampa Bay, those type of teams that it, it's going to be hard for them to win those type of series. Um, Tampa Bay's been struggling they are not playing as well as you know they would like to um and their lineup is very eh but angel pitchers haven't pitched that good uh aside from a guy or two so i think the angels win the middle game i think sandoval continues to pitch well um savali pitches well but the bullpen doesn't hang up for tampa bay because they have to use it a lot more in game one with eiflin and then they're kind of saving it a little bit for game three. So I think that's the game that the Angels will win. They'll lose the other two, and they'll go to Boston um, at 500, hoping to uh, hoping to have a decent road trip. The That middle game you mentioned is the one I, I'm specifically keeping an eye on. Sandoval is better stuff, in my view. Savali is more consistent. He doesn't have as good as stuff, but he when he's in a game, and he's especially since Tim Bay went and got him, it, it fixed something with him last year. He's just ultra, ultra consistent when he's on the mound. Watch that, see how that works out. And it, but again, Sandy has better stuff. But just who shows up? Jack or Hyde? I don't know. Last thing before we get out of here, got got a couple minutes. Then it's time for a certain somebody go watch WrestleMania. But one thing I want to ask you is about injuries, pitchers. Um. Spencer Strider looks like he's going to be out. He's an inflammation in his UCL at the very least. He's out for a couple months with that thing. And if, at the worst, it's Tommy John. We saw Shane Bieber go out yesterday uh, with UCL. We're seeing the MLBPA going at MLB about the pitch clock saying, hey, listen, you did all these changes and we had no idea how this is going to affect our pitchers. Now look at all these injuries. Nate, what do you make of it? I don't think it's the pitch clock, honestly. Um, I, I think it, there's a little bit of everything with guys are throwing way harder uh, than than they used to. And I think the biggest thing for me is that nobody's talking about this. I know Tyler Glass and I talked about this. I, I listened to him and I think he's he makes a lot of sense. Look at when the injury started and everyone's going to go, oh, it's roughly the same time as as when they started the pitch clock. But also what did what started at that time? They got rid of the sticky stuff. And the sticky stuff really helped these pitchers, I think, not not overdo it with their with their forearm. Uh, with the sticky stuff, less 
more control with less uh, grip on the baseball. Now, all of a sudden, guys got to be gripping the baseball way tighter to be able to have that same pinpoint control. And that's going to put a lot more pressure on the on the forearm tendons and, and uh, the UCL. So I think it's more sticky stuff than uh, pitch clock. But I know pitch clock is going to be a big thing. Everyone's going to point to it and say, oh, well, this is this is the new thing. So that's this. This is the reason why. Um, why there are so many pitcher injuries, but I really think it's more the sticky stuff than the um, pitch clock. Jared. I agree with Nate to the fact that there's way too many things going on. And can I also add on to the fact that like when we were pitching, we didn't throw, we didn't play year round. I mean, we did, but it wasn't as crazy as it is now. That's a huge thing there too. So um, it, it's probably a little bit of everything guys throwing consistently year round, um, not taking a lot of breaks from a very young age, the sticky stuff. Sure. Um, the pitch clock guys working quickly. I, I don't see that being a huge factor. It could definitely be, but I don't see it being a huge factor. Um, you know, guys are throwing harder too. <laughs> you know, it, it's wear and tear on your body. It, it, it happens, you know, it happen. It's going to happen to everybody if you throw too hard. So. Um, I think that's actually the main thing. You can talk about the pitch clock pushing people conditioning wise, you know, if, you're, if your body's wearing down from having to move faster, I can get that. But at this point, pitchers should have adjusted to that change by now. Uh, it should have come into the season in better condition that way. At least I look at more along lines. You're saying, yeah, Spencer Strider is a great example. The, the dude's like what? five ten, five eleven. I mean, you're if, if six foot five inch guys, 250 pound guys are having a hard time with 95, 99, 100 mile an hour pitches. How the heck was Spencer Strider going? He, to me, he was a, he was a, a ticking time bomb. And, and so I think it's a bunch of those factors. You're seeing guys. Let me let me just say it this way: Back when I was your age, when I was young, maybe two guys threw 100 miles an hour. It was a nine. If you had a ninety-four mile an hour fastball, you were top notch twenty years ago. Ninety-four, ninety-five. I think Pedro Martinez threw by ninety-five, and that was top notch. Randy Johnson blew people away at ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Now you have four or five guys on a team throwing hundred miles an hour. Your body's not meant for that. It's not. And until baseball addresses that white elephant in the room, I think we're gonna keep seeing these injuries. And by the way, if you're a fantasy baseball guy, this is why you don't draft starting pitchers in the first three rounds. Just how it is. Closing thoughts. We're going to go. WrestleMania's on. Get rid of Jose Suarez. Get rid of Who Jose gets Suarez. DFA'd, who gets DFA'd first? Jose Suarez or Cisnero? Suarez. Oh, I've been it's gotta be, Suarez it's gotta be for close. a while now. It's got to be close. Him. I mean... Who who does? It's got to be between those two guys, is it not? Suarez, Suarez. Sorry. Whoa, whoa, no! There's so much value in Jose Suarez. He's a Suarez. starting pitcher, and there are all right. Wrap it up, Derek. All right, there. it is time for us to get out of here. Follow us on Twitter at Talking Halos. Follow Nate at Nate Green Thirty Four. You can have that debate with him on Twitter. I encourage you to go to his page and ask him all about it. He'll talk your ear off. And of course, Jared underscore Tim's. Follow us all. Me and DC Paula. And in the meantime, we're out of here. Have a great one. Mm-hmm.